entry points for an attack. So now you kind of understand the different types of attack. There are different entry points that an attacker will try to utilize. And as a ethical hacker, you're going to need to learn the different entry points that can be used to breach an organization's security by doing a simulated attack or a pen test. Some of the most common entry points for an attack include remote networks. This type of entry point usually comes from the internet or over the internet. An ethical hacker needs to try to break or find a vulnerability from the outside. You don't just test inside, we test from the outside. And we also don't just test from the outside, we also test from the inside. That would include testing things such as your firewall, your proxies, your routers, making sure that there's no updates or patches that need to be applied. Now, what's interesting when it comes to remote networks or the internet, most companies spend all their security budget on protecting this particular point of entry, but what they fail to see is that there's actually other points of entries. Another one is a dial-up network. I had a student sitting in one of my classes that told me a nightmare story that they'd gone through and they'd patched everything up. They, people were coming in through the internet, their customers, their users, everything was fine, and they'd completely forgotten about a bank of modems that were online. And a, an attacker had war dialed, discovered their modems, and had made, he had plenty of time because nobody was monitoring the net, that particular network. And once he made his way in through the dial-up network, he was able to create a backdoor, and then he was able to get in through a higher speed connection through the internet. So make sure, and I also know of several government agencies that still use dial-up networks because guess what? They're a little more secure than going across the internet because that's a point-to-point -point connection. Another entry point would be obviously our local networks or our LANs. Now the LANs would also include our WLANs or our wireless networks. They both fall underneath this category. And you may be thinking, hey, I don't have to worry that much because only employees are here. Guys, trust me. I have been environments, been in environments where the company is so big, nobody really knows who anybody is. I mean, they do within their own floor. Very easy to socially engineer and walk around a building and find an open port. And maybe behind, I'm going to hide a little ooh, Raspberry Pi device that's going to go through and sniff the network. I'm going to hook it into the jack that nobody is using, maybe in an empty office, or maybe there's two different jacks behind a printer. I'm going to hook it up. And trust me, I've seen it. Nobody, when you walk around, when you socially engineer, you walk, part of the process is walking around like you know what you're doing. Very easy to clip it in, walk out, come back a week later, and you have a, ooh, I've been looking all day to use this word, a plethora. So this is another point of entry that you need to be very, very concerned about. If you've got terminals, or excuse me, jacks that aren't being utilized, you need to disconnect them. I happen to know of a particular military installation, they not only disconnect them at the patch panel, they actually cut the wire from behind the jack. And they have like 10 feet of cable that's up above so they can repatch it. And it's because it's an extremely secure environment. Wireless is a whole separate beast. That's why we have a complete dedicated course just on that. We also have to worry about stolen equipment. That is definitely a point of attack. So if someone loses their laptop, their tablet, especially in a BYOD environment where people are providing their own devices and you're hooking them into your network and they go on vacation and they lose it. And who knows, maybe they've got it so it automatically logs in their VPN. Let alone, what if it's a laptop from somebody in IT? I guarantee there's going to be some information on there that you don't want an attacker to see. This type of entry is commonly overlooked by, by, by companies everywhere. And if I can get a hold of your laptop that's authorized in your domain, oh man, am I going to totally pwn you? And what's interesting too about stolen equipment is that many times, let's face it, users get embarrassed. I can't believe I left it at the airport or I can't believe I left it at the hotel. And so a lot of times these devices are disappearing and they're not being reported very quickly or quick enough. And again, this is where part of that training mechanism comes into play so that we can get it locked out as quickly as possible. Social engineering is also another entry point. 
Now, again, we have a full course coming up for you guys on social engineering. But the concept here is that we're hacking humans. And we can do that across a phone. I can call up and say, uh, hey, Julie, maybe she's the front receptionist. Hey, Julie, this is uh, Fred Johnson at the IT department. Listen, I just uh, did some stuff to give you more permissions to some files that we're about ready to come online. Can you do me a favor? We're going to test this really fast. Uh, can you just give me your username and password? I'm going to try to log in and see if you have access to the resources that you need. Now, I know you may be thinking, come on, Dale, that's not going to really work. Trust me, it works. If it didn't work, something this stupid and simple, then I would not be getting emails about me being royalty in South Africa or me winning the lottery somewhere. This can also, social engineering can also be done face-to-face. -face. It requires someone a little more bolder. In fact, I'm going to give you a homework assignment. Go watch Catch Me If You Can if you haven't seen it, and look at it from a security perspective. I also recently just saw a, um, a clip from a, a late-night TV show where they were going out on the street talking with people and saying, hey, we're just trying to you know, see if people will tell us how they've come up with their password. And people would come up and say, oh, yeah, my password's based off my graduation year, my pet's name. My password is based off of my graduation, the year I graduated, and my pet's name. And without missing a beat, the interviewer goes, oh, really, where'd you go to school? And they'd be like, oh, I went to Hurricane High. Really? I had a friend who went there. What year did you graduate? And they go, oh, I graduated in 97. Okay, there's the first part of the password. And then they go, so you have a pet? What kind of a pet do you have? Oh, I got a little chihuahua. Oh, that's so cute. What's his name? Oh, it's Fred. Trust me. If it wasn't that easy, they wouldn't be doing it. So social engineering, this again comes back to that training aspect as far as it being extremely important. Then we have physical entry. This kind of goes back to that local network thing. Obviously, it requires me to have physical entry into your environment. So what are you guys doing to protect your company from somebody physically entering the, the organization without your knowledge? Well, I know a lot of people or a lot of companies go through and they may have security guards. They may have dead men doors. They might have pass keys. I love doing pen tests with pass keys because I love, it's called tailgating. Or better yet, let me share a story with you. I was doing some work with a particular government agency. <laughs> and uh, I got to the facility early, and the person that was supposed to let me in wasn't there. And it's a pretty secure environment. They have a pass key that you, op that you uh, swipe to open up the first set of doors. You go inside, and it's kind of like a little lobby area. And there's security guards behind these glass windows, and then there's a second set of doors. Well... I'll give you, I'll, I'll let you know that it was in Chicago and I flew out to Chicago in the middle of winter and I forgot my coat. Yeah, I know. I probably need to have a app to remind me to take a coat in the middle of winter to Chicago, huh? Anyway, I, I was freezing and sure enough, somebody came up, they swiped their card and me being a gentleman, it was a, it was a lady. I said, let me grab the door for you. And I opened up the door and she went in and I tailgated in right behind her. Now that's as far as I got, because as soon as I got on the lobby, the security guards looked through their glass window and they noticed that she went on in and I just hung out in the lobby and they were like, can we help you? I was like, oh, and I played stupid. They're like, how'd you get in? I said, oh, I just walked in. I, I, uh, and I told him I was waiting for, I gave him my contact information and he, they called him and he eventually got down there and let me in. But that is a concept that we can use as an entry point. If I can get physical access, oh man, that's when I get to have a lot of fun. I've, I've got a key logger that looks like a USB extension cord and it'll actually email me. I might even get in on your environment and deploy my own wireless access point. And if I can accomplish that, trust me, I'm going to be having some fun remotely getting into your system. 